ドリフト界の最高峰 B1 グランプリそこで戦うマシンのポテンシャルを君もゲットできる確かに安くはないが決して夢物語じゃないエンジンミッション今回は次世代ドリフトチームを先取りして皆さん So we just keep finding awesome gems around this place and this is one of them I was really geeking out about this car It's Kumukubo's old Evo 10 I guess it is from D1GP He brought a bunch of Evo, I guess that was an eight or a nine, over to D1 USA when Chelsea and myself and Russell and Tyler Cox and everybody drove in D1 USA. I don't think he brought this one, but we keep seeing all the Team Orange cars around the track. And those are really cool to me because these are the quintessential like D1 cars from back in the day. They're not a ton of horsepower. This one's probably four to 500 horsepower max, but It obviously has super cool stickers all over it. It's a team orange car, so that's extremely cool because it's one of the, I guess you could say, oldest drift cars or drift teams in Japan. Um, and it's just really cool. So let's take a look at it. Oh, hood pins, like always. So you can see they took an Evo 10 engine, they turned it from sideways. To front to back. They added a spaghetti manifold, this cool intake manifold. They made what looks like a V mount set up here for the intercooler and radiator. Basically, what every S13 and everything looks like up here, but that's not what an Evo looks like. So they had to do a lot of work to make this thing work. Very cool looking. Probably makes about 400 wheel horsepower. So nothing crazy by today's standards. So it's kind of an antiquated drift car. But man, is it cool looking, especially since it's so, I guess you could say like D1 JDM from back in the day. I'm geeking out pretty hard in here right now. This car has so much cool stuff going on. It's got a stack instrument cluster. Actually, I don't even really care about all the individual pieces. It's just so cool being in a Team Orange car. But it does have this cool stack instrument cluster. Whatever a SARD analyzer to is, I don't even know. Has a Cusco water spray controller, which is kind of cute. It has a Gretti、uh, Profec B Spec 2. So it's got a simple boost controller, which is kind of interesting that the boost isn't controlled by a standalone ECU. It has some really simple switches across here, but the by far coolest thing is I don't think I've ever touched a JDM sequential transmission before. I'm not going to like row it through gears because I have no idea what to do or anything, but that is extremely cool right here, especially because it just has a Nismo shift knob attached on top of a sequential. And then what's like completely hilarious is it has a K Sport e brake in here. So it has a hydraulic K Sport e brake, which I assume they chose because it was orange and they didn't have to paint anything or powder coat it, but that is absolutely hilarious here. You have a $20,000 transmission mounted to an eBay K Sport handbrake, which is like $180 probably. Runs off Sunoco fuel probably, since there is a can of it in the car. I can't tell what the ECU is or anything, and I don't want to go digging through the car, but there are a lot of cool little pieces. Like, here's a carbon door piece in here. Most Americans would just leave that bare and everything, but the Japanese like neat, ricey stuff. So, here's a carbon door trim. Little tiny carbon pieces over here. There's this weird air conditioning apparatus up here with actual air conditioning vents. I assume this is out of like a van, a shuttle van or something. I don't know what it's from or if it even has fans in it, but it obviously brings in air from the roof and then directs it down here onto the driver, probably so they can stay cool because Japan gets really hot. It does have a full weld in cage as well. Where most of the D1 cars we've been seeing are all Cusco bolt in cages. So it does have a fairly legitimate cage, but it's not the NASCAR style you see in most of the Formula D cars that come all the way out here. And then into the door, it's a pretty simple cage design. It's got this really cool little tiny foot rest thing. I don't know. I've nerded out pretty hard, so. Oh, I don't w a n t to touch that thing. It looks expensive. All right, I'll get out of here. There are some really simple pieces on this car. Like you would think the car would have fancy fabrication everywhere, but sometimes the easiest, simplest things are the best.